the moment we are in right now. The right to vote is precious, almost sacred. It is the most powerful non-violent tool we have to erect change in our society. And so we need to protect it and we need to protect it for us all. So to kick us off today, um, and we're gonna meet all of our organizing partners in a moment, but to kick us off here today to set the tone is Reverend Daryl Gray, you know him from the Missouri Progressive Baptist State Convention, and then we are going to hear from our Congresswoman, who is sponsoring legislation in Congress as we speak to protect our freedom to vote. Reverend Gray. We ought to really give Denise a real big hand. The work that she continues to do. One thing about Denise, she's been consistent. She's not here today and somewhere else the next day. She's here every day. And so we want to thank Denise for the work that she's doing. And as I look around, some people will question the numbers. Don't, don't ever let anyone question the numbers. We're not about uh, a whole lot of people. We're about the right people. And so we've got the right people here today. We've got Congresswoman Cory Bush here today. We, we, we may not have everybody here today, but we've got the right people here today. We have uh, Dr. Marty Casey here. We've got the right people here today. And, and I, I, I joke about this, Denise. Somebody said, well, how come there's not a whole lot of black folk when y'all do those, these things? I said, well, I'm reminded of Selma. I'm reminded of the, the day that Dr. King stood in front of Brown's uh, Chapel, AME Church, right after Bloody Sunday, and Dr. King said, y'all need to come on down. When Dr. King said, y'all need to come on down. Dr. King said, y'all need to come on down to Selma. Congresswoman, he wasn't talking about black folk because we were already there. Y'all didn't get that? Y'all work with me now, all right? I know it's... Y'all work, y'all gotta pay attention. Dr. King said, y'all come on down. The, the y'all that Dr. King was talking about, uh, Mayor Tashara Jones, he already knew that you were gonna show up. We've got the right people here. We may not have everybody here, but we've got the right people here. We've got Congresswoman Cora Bush here. We've got Mayor Tashara Jones here. We may not have everybody here, but we've got the right people here. And Dr. King said, y'all need to come to Selma. And Dr. King wasn't talking about black folk, because black folk were already in Selma. Black clergy were already in Selma. But when Dr. King said, y'all need to come on down to Selma, Dr. King was talking about white folk. He was talking about old white folk, young white folk, religious white folk, non-religious white folk, gay white folk, straight white folk, labor white folk. So Dr. King was saying, all y'all white folk need to come down here to Selma because when y'all show up, NBC is going to show up. When y'all show up, CBS is going to show up. When y'all show up, then folk are going to start recognizing what is happening, not only in Selma, but Selma and Montgomery and St. Louis and all through the country. So, Denise, I'm glad that you continue to show up. Legal women's voters, I'm glad you continue to show up. Because when y'all show up, other folks start paying attention. When, when y'all start, when y'all get on the front line, and the other folk that are here, these young folks, see, it's important that we recognize who, who's here. These young folk are here. They're, they're not the future, y'all. They're today. We keep getting it confused. We keep thinking that young folk are the future, Xavier. You no, know they're not. Young folk are today. And so I was asked to say uh, just a couple of things and a, and a prayer, but you know I'm Baptist, so. I don't know what else to tell you. Apostle, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm Baptist, so. I'm probably one of the few people here this evening, if, if maybe not the only one, who actually worked with John Lewis uh, back in the mid-80s when he was a city councilman in Atlanta, Georgia. And I was working with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And the tenacity that uh, the late Congressman Lewis showed um, in the halls of Congress, that same tenacity he showed in the Atlanta City Council and he showed Throughout, the, throughout America with SNCC, and I'd be remiss if I did not use his words uh, to set the tone. My words, my words, my work pale in comparison to what the late Congressman John Lewis gave. My words would pale, but let his words set the tone. 
He said, take a long, hard look down the road. You'll find that you'll have to travel a longer distance once you've made a commitment to work for change. He said, they know that this transformation will not happen right away. Change often takes time. It really happens all at once. In the movement, we didn't know how history would play itself out when we were getting arrested and waiting in jail or standing in unmovable lines on the courthouse steps. We didn't know what would happen, but we knew it would happen. Sometimes we don't know what may happen when we start, start on the journey. When 10 years ago at Ferguson, little did we know that during at the death of Mike Brown that that, that, that uprising would, would create a Congresswoman Cory Bush. We didn't know that. We, we don't know, Dr. Casey, what might happen in the moment. We don't know how God is working in that moment, but we've just got to wait because somewhere down the road, change will come. That's what the song said. I know a change. I, I know that's over there. I know a change is going to come. That's a movement song, by the way, just so y'all know. Here in Missouri, they say that we are the show me state. But we've got to show them. We've got to show them that, that we are concerned about the welfare and the well-being of all God's people, black and white and brown and yellow and red. That's what Congressman John Lewis fought for. That's what he struggled for. That's what he sacrificed for. We've got to be reminded, not just of the work of Congressman Lewis, but all of those who not just suffered and bled, but those who actually died, white preachers who died in Selma, white, white, white working women who came from the north and went down into Montgomery and died. We, now we're not just talking about black folk who gave their lives, but we're talking about all folk who gave their lives. Not those who just suffered, not those who just bled, but those who gave their lives. And we think that standing out in the hot sun is a sacrifice. We think uh, 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 getting out and giving a little time, uh, making phone calls is a sacrifice. But that's not the sacrifice. People die. And so we've got to show folk that in the show me state, we're going to show you. That we're going to show you that we are going to register and we are going to vote. We are going to mobilize and we are going to get engaged. We are going to make sure that things change. We are going to fight for the working class. We are going to fight for working families. We are going to fight for LGBTQ+. We are going to fight for all people marginalized and vulnerable. That's what we're going to do. We're, we're not just going to be the show me state. We're going to say we showed you. We're going to be the we showed you state. And so I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And so let's just bomb just for a moment. Just however you worship, however you worship, worship that way. We pray to a God who is called by many names, a God who is both masculine and feminine. We pray, Lord God, to that God. And God, we ask that you would continue to be with all of these organizations who have put forth the work, who have sacrificed that voting rights might be real for all people. And that voting rights might not be something given to some and denied to others. We ask a blessing upon those who continue to put in the work. Our Congresswoman Bush, our Mayor Jones, who continue to put in the work in spite of. In spite of divisions and in spite of criticism and in spite of cynicism, they continue to put in the work. And so we're grateful. And Lord God, we don't come for partisan politics, but we come for people politics. We come because we understand how sacred the vote is. We understand how important the vote is. We understand how powerful the vote is. And so we come, Lord God, standing on the shoulders of our ancestors who indeed have suffered and bled and died. And we ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. We're gonna keep on walking. We're gonna keep on talking. We're marching up the freedom land. We pray in the name of all that is holy. Amen.
evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I want to start, first of all, by thanking everyone that Denise just, just thanked, every single one of you by name. Um, but definitely a special shout out to Denise Lieberman, who does all the things and who's been doing this for such a long time. Uh, and the Missouri Voter Protection Coalition, of course, to Reverend Gray, who um, told us his Baptist, and he preached. He gave us a good sermon, and that really energized me. So thank you, Reverend Gray, and, and all of your work with the Progressive Baptist uh, State Convention. Um, to the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, we appreciate you all so much. You always show up, and everyone, Legal Women Voters, actually St. Louis, everyone that was just named. Um, and everyone help, who helped organize this vigil today, and especially in this location. Thank you to our wonderful Mayor, Mayor Jones and her team. Thank you, Mayor Jones, for being here. One thing that Reverend Grace said was, don't look at the numbers. It's not about the numbers. It's about who's here and what we're going to do with it. And so when our mayor shows up, Come on. <laughs> and she brought her team, so we appreciate our mayor. Uh-oh. of organizers like Frankie Muse Freeman and movement leaders like Dr. King and that Congress passed the Civil Rights Law, like Civil Rights Act, like the Fair Housing Act, like the Voting Rights Act. Congressman Lewis fought to affirm that access to the ballot box should never be a privilege. It should be a fundamental right. And now more than ever, we should be working to protect that right. Because in Missouri and across our nation, our right to vote you all is being attacked. It's being attacked by people who are trying to take power away from communities like St. Louis and our mayor fights that every day. And in many of our, our communities, our marginalized communities, we still face so many barriers to access in that ballot box. From gerrymandering to strict voter ID laws to lack of accessibility at polling places to felony disenfranchisement, these tactics of voter suppression are aimed to target black voters. And the far, the far right is only looking to expand the suppression of our voices and our political power. And so we will stop them. And let me say, it's past time that Congress speaks. The authoritarianism with legislative action that will not only protect that right to vote, but will expand it. Congress must honor the legacy of Congressman uh, Lewis by passing his bill, the John Lewis Voting Rights Abandoned Act. I'm proud to co-sponsor expand down on both discrimination. Somebody get the mic. Making it work. Here we go. She good. to 
Rainbow Act to expand voting access for our unhoused community. I'm proud to have voted in favor of the Freedom to Vote Act, which will protect black and brown voters from race-based discrimination by establishing national standards to safeguard the right to vote, to counter election denial, which we know happens, to end partisan gerrymandering, and to help big, get the big money out of politics. This legislation builds on the progress made by states all across this country. Because everyone deserves the right to vote. Regardless of your address, you deserve the right to vote. Regardless of if you've been incarcerated or if you are incarcerated, which I wrote a bill for that, you deserve the right to vote. Regardless of if you don't have a car or own a home. Regardless of if you register the day of the election. And regardless of if you have ID or not. That's why I introduced...